do you think that's a panic move by Marvel? I do. You do? Yeah. That's, that's what I was about to segue right. into. So they're just like, bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> I got an idea. What do we do? We bring him back. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Nerd News Podcast, starring Tyler Waltz. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Nerd News Podcast. Today I am with... Derek James. And we're going to be talking about the rumors that Robert Downey Jr. is coming back and what that means for the MCU and anime, which is a subject that both of us are very well versed on uh, from the brief conversation before the camera started. Right, right. and yeah, I feel uncomfortable talking about it. You do? Yeah, because when I was younger, you didn't talk about anime. No, you didn't. You held it in. You kept it inside of you. Uh, you found other nerds like that were like you, but you like secretly. Yeah. yeah and like, then you like talked in a dark corner with them about anime. Yeah, I would be more inclined to talk about like the adult content that I watched, like uh huh. Right. Than yeah. Anime sometimes. I will never forget. Uh, <laughs> oh, we can talk about the MCU here in a second, but uh, I used to work at a high school with a football team, mm -hmm. and uh, I was. Uh, like working with a football player and uh he like made some anime reference and i understood the anime reference and he's like wait a minute you watch anime and i was like bro you have no idea you, no idea. you don't know how deep i'm in. it's years long i got how... bullied for this shit i know yeah appreciate this <laughs> yeah you lead the you lead the state in tackles and you're like ashamed for anime it's like dude let your anime fly, flag fly dude yeah, it's yeah, yeah. So. Um, so do you just want to tell people a little bit about yourself, how long you've been doing comedy, what you do? Yeah. So I've been doing comedy for about seven years now. Um, yeah, like, uh, I'm local Indianapolis. Uh, I work at helium comedy club often. Uh, that's kind of the main club that I work out at. Um, but I've been able recently in the last few years to kind of tour around and hit some pretty big clubs. I've done some funny bones and, uh, improv, but you know, I'm like kind of, I, I'm getting there. Like I'm not quite there yet, but things are starting to happen, which I'm enjoying. And nice. yeah, cool. I'm glad to hear it. Um, I know that you were one of the first comedians that I saw when I got started. Oh yeah, and doing comedy because I started technically in 2020, but yep. it was like March 12th of 2020. Oh yeah, and then so it was like, like <laughs> all right. And then I did another show like March 15th of 2021. Yeah, or I might have those dates mixed up, but mm -hmm. I like took a year off. But yeah, I always enjoyed your stuff. Your your joke about watching the Titanic with your friends. Oh yeah, it's a classic hilarious. coming of age story. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So have you heard or seen like the rumors that Robert Downey Jr. is coming back? I haven't, but I'm interested in what, like how they're going to bring him back if they are. Yeah. So. What is your opinion of where Marvel was to where it is now? Like up, down, it's the same. So I can't. Um, okay, look. Uh, what Infinity War? Right? Was uh, Wars in game? In game. Okay, was so the last, the last one. one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Loved how it ended. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, that was a nice like bow button on the series for me. Mm -hmm. I kind of wrapped it up there, and I haven't gotten back in. Um, so I liked where it ended. As where it's going now, I can't really, I don't know, but, uh, I mean, I can't imagine Tony Stark coming back, hurting the MCU yeah. <laughs> universe, you know? And I think that's kind of where a lot of people stand is I saw Endgame and I liked it. And then there's the people that hung on and yeah. they're falling off or the people that were like, and I'm done, you know? Do you think that's a panic move by Marvel? I do. That's, you do? Yeah. That's, that's what right. I was about to segue right. into is mm -hmm. I feel like they've just been hemorrhaging their audience. So they're just like... Bring him back. <laughs> I got an idea. What do we do? We bring him back. <laughs> yeah. How? Like, we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, I was talking about this with uh, with Dyke a little bit on the previous episode, if you want to check that out, about uh, like Doctor Who and stuff. Because yeah. I had the opinion that for the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, their big hoorah to get people back because yeah. they lost people with nice. Whitaker and stuff like that. Was that what they called it? Was a hoorah? No, that's what I call it. Oh, nice. It. Yeah, Good for you. Yeah, nice, nice job. Yeah. Hero, um, was bringing back David Tennant. Yeah. Which was a, the big thing for the 50th anniversary, too. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we're hemorrhaging. Let's bring back the favorite. Right. Dyke brought up some very good points about why it makes sense in the context of what was going on. But I can't really justify bringing back Robert Downey Jr. in my head. Unless it's, God, please just start watching us again. Well, yeah. And also, like, I mean, like, when you kill off a character, I mean, the character. The. I mean, the guy. I mean, you actually, by bringing him back, take away from that death. Yeah. And uh, I don't like necessarily when when uh, shows do that. Because, you know, you've already, I mean, you've already grieved for that character. Mm -hmm. You know? And so you sit there and you're like, okay, well, I can kind of see what you're doing. You're... 
you know, it, you're not getting the response that you want. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's so many like different ways you can take the Marvel universe. Yeah. I assume, um, cause I haven't read the comics, but you know, you, I mean, I think you could at least figure out a way to replace that character. Yeah. Um, and find somebody, you just got to keep going, uh, and find the character that everybody relates with like they did Tony Stark. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, like I'm a, it just depends on how they do it. Yeah. I, I tried to hang on. I really did. The, did you? Oh, so you fell off too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. After okay. Endgame, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm curious what they're going to attempt, right? Right. And then they had their their four flagship, hey, after Endgame, mm-hmm. setting the, the like foundation. And yeah. it was the Falcon Winter Soldier, WandaVision, stuff like that. Yeah. I thought Falcon Winter Soldier was great. I think the message that it was doing, a, Did lot, they, of, a lot of people went way too into the nuance and made it political. Was that a show. TV show? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. they bring back Bucky? Is that? Yes. Okay. They, basically. So Bucky isn't Captain America. It's, it's I know. Falcon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was basically um, the government didn't want Falcon to be the the guy. Right. Because yeah. they wanted more control over the person that was representing the government. Okay. So they got their own Captain America, gave the shield even after it was donated and gotcha. stuff like that. Yeah. And then Falcon and Winter Soldier was realizing all the government bullshit. Right. And were fighting back against that. Okay, that's interesting. Loved that story. Okay. Loved it. Good, yeah. Because I know I know Bucky became Captain America mm-hmm. in the comics. Yeah, and so did Sam. So did Falcon. Okay, so yeah. yeah. All right. So I think the progression was Steve Rogers, Bucky, Sam, back to Steve Rogers. Gotcha. When it comes to comic books. Okay. So yeah. it made sense. I personally would have liked to have seen Bucky as Captain America because he's my favorite comic book Captain right. America. Mm-hmm. But I understand with where they were going with the MCU, why they made them separate things. Right. So mm-hmm. completely fine with it. Had no no quarrels with that. But immediately after those four shows, it's almost like they were like, okay, we're getting these specific audiences for people that like Captain America. And right. The, so let's just make everything for everybody. Yeah. And I just, I was just done. I was like, okay, right. I'm and out. I, and I do think the TV shows take away from that. I mean, like, if you think of, like, monster movies. Yeah. Right? I mean, I don't think you get any bigger than Endgame. No. I no. mean, you don't. I mean, like, mm. yeah. So, I think, uh, you know, if I was, if I was to, I think, the route that I would go. I, I mean, like, you've got so many, like, great side stories. Mm-hmm. Right? Right give yourself some time to breathe. I mean, like that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot to take in, Mm -hmm. uh, after that kind of story arc ends, right? Like throw another, like Ragnarok out there or throw like a couple of fun. I mean, I guess you could have said you, they did that with guardians of the galaxy. Yeah. Right. You throw these like fun movies out Mm -hmm. and maybe they tried, but, uh, but yeah, when you get the TV series too, you're asking for a lot of investment Yeah, and you can go into the nuance, but, uh, yeah, I think you need to let the let the series kind of breathe, let people die down a little bit, and then allow them to get excited about the, the new thing. one. Yeah, because yeah. there, with there's with yeah, excuse me, if there's no breathing room, there's no hype building. Yeah, it's like I just like just orgasmed all over. You know, mm-hmm. give me a refractory yeah. period and let me like chill. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, like I don't like, know. Let me go get a cigarette. Yeah, let me get a cigarette. <laughs> let me let me get a glass of water before we start adding a no, new. Yeah. Uh, villain from the universe that can just tear apart the whole entire universe. Yeah. It's like, all right, yeah, <laughs> just let me breathe a little bit, dog. I also think it's a situation. Marvel, where, you're too clingy. Yeah. yeah, way too clingy. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the the extra layer of it is when it was the movies. If you didn't necessarily like Thor or whatever, right, you could still watch Captain America and Iron Man and right. still get the mm-hmm. Avengers. But the amount of TV shows, like, I have no idea if Loki is going to tie into this next movie or, like, if anything from Ant-Man and the Wasp, like, I don't know what matters anymore. So there is a, there is a problem that they have. Like, you can only go so nerdy. Yeah. Right. You can only go so nuanced. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, like, yeah, like, if you're a, if you love the TV shows, you love the comic books, you love all those little nuggets, but then, like, people don't have time to to like to learn an entirely new world right mm-hmm. right and uh and keep up with it so you've got to keep you got to find the the balance between okay like we're giving everybody who is a diehard fan the little nuggets and gems that they want in yeah. in the series but not isolating just the casual watcher yeah. because uh because i have to watch you know a hundred hours of yeah. tv and all these series to even know what's going on which yeah. I feel like to a lesser degree, they're almost doing with Star Wars too. 
Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. With yeah. Star Wars, like the Mandalorian was amazing. Right. Like, yeah. The Mandal it was so good because mm -hmm. it was something different that Star Wars was doing. I did not like the new Disney Star Wars movies. I, I liked Rogue One. I thought Episode Seven was fine. Eight and nine were like dumpster fires. Here's the thing, though, and I'll I'll argue this till I'm blue in the face: is the Star Wars that you get when you're a kid is the Star Wars that you get. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean. With episode one through three, I mean, that's the Star Wars I grew up with, and yeah. I love uh, one through three. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I love them, and uh, and I get it. Like, it's not the Star Wars that you yeah. were, that you grew up with. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, you know, it's it almost is kind of perfect because that's how the world works, yeah. right? You don't necessarily get what you want, mm -hmm. and then once you get some distance from the movies, they uh, they kind of cool off. Everybody talks their shit and, you know, freaks the fuck out about well, it. And the people that just eviscerated it, the Phantom Menace and stuff like that. Yeah. Jar Binks was wild. Back but yeah, then. but like, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll argue this till I'm blue in the face. Like Jar Jar is the final vote in the Senate to give Palpatine <laughs> yeah. power. Like that's insane. It right. Is, like, insane. like, yeah, I get it. There's a lot of politics in it. And for a kid that's like, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it kind of goes over their head, but as you grow up and watch it over and over and over again, you realize like, this is a, I mean, I mean, Palpatine is playing chess yeah, and he's like nine moves ahead mm -hmm. of, of everybody. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, I just think that, um, I, I lost our thread here, oh, yeah. but yeah, but you get the star Wars that you get. It's an imperfect world. And then what you can do is you can build the universe around it. And that leads to different things that are great. Like if if um, episodes one through three aren't the way they are, you don't get Clone Wars by yeah. Dave Filoni, which mm -hmm. is the best. The Clone Wars TV show was. Is the phenomenal. best Star Wars uh, content. In a while. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, you, I, you think of all time? Yeah. I mean, okay. for sure. I mean, yes. like, uh, yeah, it starts off as a kid show, but mm -hmm. I mean, nothing tells you about the Force more than, yeah. than Clone Wars. Um, nothing character builds quite like, uh, Clone Wars. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it ran for like 10 seasons, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I loved the, when it got canceled, the ending that Dave Filoni did, uh, they did the last like four episodes, mm -hmm. I think all about the force, yeah. which is great. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I know. I think, and I think that provided the Star Wars universe with the substance that everybody wanted. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think my favorite Star Wars thing of all time is Knights of the Old Republic. Oh yeah, the video the, game. The yeah, both one and two. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I I, I didn't I didn't play them. You never. I played didn't. Them? I'm oh. not a big video game player. Like yeah, uh, it's. I didn't have the patience, but I hear it's yeah. It's hard to go back now. The people that say it's the best thing ever are playing it through the lens of 2001. Right. Yeah. You know. So mm -hmm. like, I jumped on a server one time to play it, and I just never got oh, into the it. MMO. Yeah. I yeah, the MMO is bad. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. It's. A lot of people feel the MMO did what the Disney movies did to the old <laughs> to stuff. The stuff. Okay, because yeah. I think the reason that everybody got so mad about the sequels is because they kind of purposefully spit in the face of the old stuff. Yeah. In what a lot of people argue is a disrespectful way. Like, I hated what right. they did with Luke. Like, you're telling me, because I read the books and stuff too. Yeah. You're telling me, like, the Jedi that did all these things and is bringing back the Order completely gave up when his nephew was like, I'm feeling moody today. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. It doesn't make sense with the character. It doesn't. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like they did the same thing with Obi-Wan. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, but people, you know, I get, maybe Luke was having a bad day. You I, know? I like, get it. <laughs> maybe, just... maybe he's an old crotchety bitch and, the, <laughs> and the, you know, he's moody too. Yeah. I mean, Mark right. Hamill as a person is a pretty moody person. He is. Yeah. So it's like, all right, well maybe they were just trying to write it to be true to Mark Hamill. It's also not good that he even in interviews is like, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Knights of the old Republic with the MMO, like Revan becomes a bad guy again. Mm -hmm. Like the whole first two games are him like building up the power and you have the choice to be good or bad. Yeah to take out like the ultimate evil that is like Malik or Nihilus and all these huge, huge right. entities in star Wars. And it's like in the MMO, he's just like a boss at the end of a DLC. Oh yeah. And it's like, what the, f <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, this was my favorite dude ever. Right. And, yeah. And now he took like 30 minutes. Like, uh, okay. This is I get bullshit. What you're yeah. But, uh, and you made him a bad guy instead of somebody that you interact with and like could have been a bigger part of the story. Right. So, 
it just it feels like Disney is trying to wipe the slate clean, but doing it in the way that makes the most people upset. And it's weird because I feel the exact same. I feel like Marvel and Star Wars are paralleling each other with how they're treating their audience, which obviously well, it's both Disney. Yeah, I, I think it's Disney. Yeah, Disney trying to uh, run two franchises very similarly, and also like, um, like I, I, I think there's some like inner like conflict in Disney. I think so too. I mean, and I think that uh, that is really reflective. It's reflective directly by who like the directors are of the uh, shows. Yeah, exactly. Because like yeah. if you look who the director of The Mandalorian is, you're like, everything he makes is a banger. Right. right. Everything else, not eh, so much. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely see the, <laughs> you can definitely see the, uh, the, the war uh, going on in Disney as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like John Favreau and like uh, Dave Filoni mm -hmm. on one side and then whatever the president's everybody name else. and everybody else. And they're just like, <laughs> yeah. Because <they're> like, <laughs> yeah. um, apparently Dyke mentioned this. Doctor Who is going under Disney. Dude, they're going to scoop up everything. Which at what point, like not trying to get political or like government stuff, at what point is it a monopoly, right? Right. Like, if we can't have the same utility company all across Indiana, at what point does Disney acquire enough studios? They're, they're monopolizing <laughs> every nerd, a bit of nerd culture that you could, yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's frightening. Everybody always goes to the whole, oh, the Disney's getting everything. But it is at this point, like Doctor Who, they're now acquiring... Yeah. British stuff. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. What are we doing at this point? Yeah. Like go back to your goofy ass mouse and leave our shit alone. Yeah, bro, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Focus on the mouse, dog. Yeah. yeah. I always was a goofy fan. I liked goofy. Yeah, fan. uh what it blew my mind when I found out he was a cow. What? Yeah, goofy's a cow. No. Yeah, you thought it was Is a dog? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Of course no, I did. A, no, he's a cow. Since when? I don't know. Like I, somebody on the internet. I mean, this is obviously. Oh well, that's valid. Yeah, this is obviously <laughs> me just reading like a like a meme. Mm -hmm. But I think he's a cow. See, because the big joke is, is like, why can he talk but Pluto can't? Right. You know. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. So, yeah, that's crazy. I can't even imagine. Like, I don't. See that being said, though, in the Goofy movie, right, his son dates a dog, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's not a cow. I mean. If you're against interspecies couples, mm, yeah, that's Disney. That's what Disney really pushing their progressive <laughs> agenda early, <laughs> yeah. early on in that, the early '90s. Yeah. That is always my favorite argument for why shit is going downhill, because like it's such the latch on point of everybody. It's like, can we please just talk about why it's actually getting a little worse? You know, what do you mean by like? So you, like, you don't like the fact that people latch on that, like, oh, it's getting bad because it's becoming political. Yeah, like, right. Yeah, it's it's such a low hanging fruit argument that it just right. frustrates me because you're taking away from legitimate complaints that somebody could have against a thing, right? Right. Yeah. Like, uh, well, well, like Doctor Who, everybody complained is like Jodie Whittaker. It's like, oh my god, the Doctor's a woman now. Right. And it's like seasons ago many other like time Lords and stuff have been women have. So, so it's like, that's not the issue. The issue is, is that they changed writers and the writers made it a kid show. Right. Like, and also, and also like, uh, it's like, look, it's not, I, I, you can try to make a political point like in star Wars, like in Obi-Wan, uh, that Leia has too much of a role on in that. It's just like, okay. what are you mad about though? I'm not mad that Leia's, has a more prominent role. I'm mad mm. that uh, three goons can't catch Leia <laughs> yeah. and when she's 10 years old. Like, I mean, that's just poor writing. It is. It's yeah. It's not like, writing. it's not like, okay. Yeah. I get it. Like you can, you can be like, all right. Like why is every lead character in a Disney, a female lead now? Mm. Like I get it, but also like put that aside. If you want to really want to criticize something, just yeah. A 10 year old princess Leia is not going to lead a, uh, three goons around on a like a what's that like old timey like when somebody's chasing the oh, music comes the door yeah and, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just like okay that's just poor writing yeah it's not yeah. gonna happen it's right. not gonna happen um but yeah it's, so everybody just wants to latch on to that kind of stuff it's like there's legitimate criticizes in here that i feel like if people focused on that could actually lead to some constructive criticism that they can latch on to right because as soon as you just get the huge wave of like it's a woman it's a uh, yeah then your criticism is completely invalid because they don't want to listen because you're just coming off 
very bad. Right, yeah. You, you look like you're coming off on the wrong side yeah. of history. Yeah, I know what you were saying. Like, yeah. my my arguments for why uh, the, the seventh Star Wars movie is bad has nothing to do with Rey or uh, what was her name that was, like, they tried to set her and Finn up. Oh, yeah. Like, she literally left social media because people, right, yeah, like, bothered her because she had anything yeah. to do with the script. Um, right, yeah. But uh, but like their their issues their issues were like oh they're doing this no it's I think even if it's not a Star Wars movie the movie doesn't make sense like your okay. your crew is leading an active rebellion against you because you're not telling them the plan right and the whole plan was for them to evac and you to go back and blow up the ship mm-hmm. why was that such a big secret you know like why did you right. go through all this trouble throughout the entire movie of keeping this a secret and fighting a rebellion of your own people yeah when you had a plan the whole time right yeah that completely contradicted what everybody else was trying to do this whole movie yeah that's where it falls apart for me it has nothing to do yeah with yeah who they cast it's the plot yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so but then again like that's uh that goes back to my point it's like the plot is the plot that yeah. you get and you know what uh let's see what comes after it mm-hmm. and what, where this goes but uh like keep rewatching them uh keep uh kind of finding nuggets try to make it work and yeah. that's the star wars universe you get mm-hmm. and i mean it might breed something great it could yeah it could i mean the mandalorian was amazing Andor was really good right so you're getting little pieces of like what reminds you of what when it was good you know? and then also let john farvro and dave filoni just do write everything. everything just do absolutely everything <laughs> yeah, yeah everything if there's a new movie mm-hmm. i don't give a shit no <laughs> yeah filoni has <laughs> needs to be a part of every single thing that yeah. comes out of yeah in the star wars universe well, I think we can wrap up part one. Do you have anything else to add before we jump into part two? Uh, no, I feel bad that we didn't talk about it, uh, more of the Marvel Universe. Well, it all kind of wraps in together because like... They, they all don't Disney. Yeah, it's all it, owned it's by all Disney. Disney. And they all, they're running the company the same... Or they're, they're yeah. running both branches the exact same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's... I mean, the Robert Downey Jr. thing, even if it is just a rumor that was sparked by Disney, feels like a desperate attempt. Does to Robert just, Downey Jr. want to come back? He said that he would. If, okay. If circumstances were yeah. correct, he would. But obviously, do you know how much money he makes per Bro, movie? Bro, and also, you know he loves being Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when... Uh, I mean, it revitalized his career. Yeah, it was when... Um, who was... Uh, who was uh, James Bond? Um, Pierce Morgan. Oh yeah, yeah. It was like when Pierce Morgan was like, "I never want to not be James Bond." Mm-hmm. I like, I, th- I feel like Robert Downey Jr. is like, "No, I'm always gonna want to be Iron Man." People know who Iron Man is because of him. And, oh and yeah. People know who mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. is because of Iron Man. Like they are like Wolverine with Hugh Jackman. Yeah. It's gonna be so hard to get anyone else to even get a tenth of that energy. Right. Of that person. Yeah. Bro, I think you know that he wears the suit at night. Oh yeah, you know, I like everyone's, <laughs> you know, like you know, he's got like four of them. He's like, I'm gonna put that one on tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, so I think that's gonna be it. Uh, check out part two where we talk about anime. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Hey everybody, thank you for coming back to part two, and we're gonna be talking about anime and some of the gripes that I have with it, and you know, nostalgia, why we like it, where it is now. Uh, but yeah, Derek, do you want to start off? There's nothing bad about anime. There's no good. No, I'm there's, kidding. <laughs> there's the reason that I str- I struggle to talk about anime is because I feel like there's so much bad, but there's so much good. Yeah, because you know? it makes you feel a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, in your it's, pants. It's my feelings. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, I I know a lot of people like joke and shit on like the hentai stuff. Yeah. If that's your thing, I don't care. Nah, it's yeah. It I is could what not it is. care less. I mean, that's how you. How do I mean? Fan service is how you rope in fourteen year old boys yeah. at like three a.m. when they're watching Cartoon Network and Toonami yeah. comes on. And you see One Piece, and you're like, "Who is this Nami?" You're like, "Right, yeah." Like, I mean, like, I mean, anime knows what they're doing. They 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 get you young, yeah. Uh, when you're impressionable and you're, what was your first anime? Okay, so it goes like, well, it just depends. Like, if you want to go, uh, like afternoon after school, mm-hmm. um, Dragon Ball was my first anime. Yeah, that's love like Dragon Ball. Ninety percent of Americans. Yeah. And then if you want to go late night, 3 a.m., Toonami, mm-hmm. uh, Inuyasha was... That was mine. Yeah. The, I mean, there's nothing better than the first three episodes of Inuyasha when he's yeah. fighting his brother on his dad's. And then the whole series goes it, like Off downhill from there. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's terrible after that. Mm-hmm. We tried... My roommate and I tried to watch it again all the way through. Can't. Uh, you rough. can't. No, it's so much filler. Yeah. It's it's brutal. Um, 
but yeah, like you know, he calls his brother a bastard, and you're like, oh, wait, what, what is <laughs> yeah. this? Yeah, <laughs> this is a, yeah. this is on a Christian Cartoon Network right. channel. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, there's a different world of cartoons out there. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that one, and then. I loved Outlaw Star. Outlaw Star okay. is my favorite anime of all time. That's the okay. one that was like, okay, that got me into nice. anime. Right on. And then from there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a, I, da- it was a downhill spiral. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny how it latches on to some people. Because, like, my first anime that I, I saw was Inuyasha. Yeah. But I didn't really care for it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, these are some dope sword fights and stuff like that. Right. So then yeah. I kind of looked into Bleach and I thought Bleach was pretty good. And yeah. Dragon Ball. Because it was all Toonami. Like whatever was on oh, Toonami. Dude, that old Toonami run was like, oh, it was oh amazing. so good. And then you find Cowboy amazing. Bebop and you're like, wait, what? There's space cowboys? Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It's, uh, anime does a really good job of, like when you're 13 hooking you with oh, yeah. cool shit. Yeah, yeah, cuz a lot of people complain about like the oh my gosh, it's Super Saiyan 14, but when you're 12 years old, that's the craziest Dude, shit you could imagine in your life. I used to like get home from school and if we were running late cuz I was right in the middle of the Cell Saga. Mm-hmm. If we were running late, uh I would melt down <laughs> like i would be screaming at my mom or my dad like we have to, to get home <laughs> right like like you're not my parents if we don't get home like and if you missed one oh and like and here's the thing <laughs> chances are you didn't miss much. you didn't miss anything dude <laughs> yeah, you didn't miss anything you're like you come back and they're like still talking to each other and you're like wait a minute because well that was the anticipation it was like is today's episode the one the one yeah. right and if you missed it it was crushing. Like, how many episodes did I see Frieza doing this and just talking mad shit? Oh, hell yeah, That's dude. Like, like, half the I season. mean, like, nine... This is the best part about Dragon Ball Z is, like, there will be nine episodes of the Spirit Bomb. Mm-hmm. Uh, charging. Charging. The Spirit Bomb has 0%... Uh, success, success rate, rate. Yep. yeah and that's like, you're yeah. like you're, but you still love it but you still love it you're, you're like, like oh gosh, you're like it's this, massive is this gonna yeah. be the time is, yeah. this, is it gonna happen yeah. no. just I love the arc of the spirit bomb never working never and that and, and like there and there's two constants uh in in any uh in dragon ball z which is uh there are two things that are going to get destroyed in every drag like in all iterations of Dragon Ball Z. Okay. And that's Krillin in the moon. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting like some nuance, like a planet. And is it, no, no, Krillin no. It's Krillin in the, in the moon. moon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. can expect those two things to just get obliterated. Well, yeah. he's like, he's got a wife and kids now. So like, yeah, I don't know Bulma is his wife. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, well, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Android. Yeah. yeah. 18? 18. 18. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, have you, have you watched super or kept up? On no, it? I haven't. I, 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 you know what? Like, uh, it got to the point where, um, like, even when the Boo Saga came on, I just, uh, I just fell off. Like, yeah. and uh, I just found, I just found more anime that I liked. Yeah. So uh, it's funny how, like, when you mature, you actually change the type of animes that you like. Right. Because Dragon Ball Z set up the like archetype of hero never ending power up right right which basically explains dragon ball it explains one piece it explains yeah. hunter hunter to a certain degree hunter hunter a bit less but like that is the staple of shonen anime right like, exactly naruto like mm-hmm. there's always that power level that it's the craziest thing we've ever seen and then yeah, there's always one better not yeah. until like three weeks later right exactly it's better yeah uh yeah so like you know, I liked Dragon Ball, but then, like, you discover, uh, like, Yu Yu Hakusho, and, like, mm-hmm. that's... I haven't seen Yu Yu Hakusho. Okay, that's, like, one of... The, I mean, if you just do the Dark Tournament, like, mm-hmm. that's one of the best tournament animes that you'll ever see. So, that's what I've heard. It's also the same guy that makes Hunter Hunter. Right, it is, yeah. Um, so, it's on my watch list as soon as uh, Macy and I get caught up on uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. And I like what they're doing, like, and then, like, as you get older, like, you, like, discover... Uh, like the art side of anime mm-hmm. more like you get into cowboy bebop and then you get into cowboy bebop then you go to samurai shampoo and like samurai shampoo is one of the best animes i've yeah. ever seen i mean i will watch that i will watch that like i'll just pick an episode and watch it yeah. like that's how much i like it mm-hmm. and then uh and then like you just go down to this rabbit hole then you get into mecha animes and you're like holy shit gundam and you're like oh yeah. this is wild yeah yeah I uh, it's funny how much who you are at the time shapes your opinions on 
a show. And this isn't an anime exclusive thing, but like I I love Cowboy Bebop. I can't say it's my favorite anime of all time, but I can say that it is a show that fundamentally changed a part of my life. Right, yeah, and you just learn that like okay, like uh you I, the story's great, right? The characters are great, but it's also cool. Yeah. Like it's it's you're like okay, like the art behind this is, is gorgeous. Amazing. Like you, as you get older and you watch it, you're like, all right. Yeah. Like Faye's got big titties and like, it's amazing. And yeah. you're like, it makes me feel some type of way, mm-hmm. uh, or spikes hot, whatever. I don't care who you what, like, yeah. what it is. Like, my, uh, uh, my buddy's sister said that, uh, spike taught her what a himbo was and uh, why, like that was like her thing. What is it? A himbo. Yeah. Where it's like a dumb, like not jacked, but like a, a stunning man like that, slightly effeminate man yeah. Yeah, yeah dude uh my buddy is uh he's gay and uh vicious is like yeah oh my god <laughs> vicious dude. uh and sarah seraph yeah from uh, final fantasy 7 yeah mm-hmm. like they're, they're such a specific archetype that is like uh, of course this is what you're doing like, right mm-hmm. it's so obvious it's it's the male fan service to the female like fey and all that. right yeah it's so funny to see yeah uh so yeah, like I mean, like uh, I mean, like <laughs> and, uh, they do a good job of hooking you. I mean, yeah. whether you're gay, straight, you know, doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. They'll they've got the stuff forever mm-hmm. for everybody. Yeah. When I was a kid watching Cowboy Bebop, it was like the first show that taught me like depth and like nuance and stuff matters because right. like the whole Spike story and like. I, I couldn't see the color difference in his eyes when mm-hmm. you're a kid because it's like, it's basically the same color. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like the whole past and how he was hung up on something and all the characters had something that they were trying to get away from right. that just kept pulling them back. Cause it's who they were when it comes to like jet being a dirty cop, mm-hmm. Faye being in the accident and discovering that she isn't who she used to be. Yeah. There's so many things in cowboy bebop that as a kid was like one of my first ever experiences with like, Con- there's consequences to you as a human just existing right and it's it's a beautiful story like and plus it looks fucking cool yeah dude come yeah. on on top of that yeah incredible yeah yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. and then all they throw in episodes like i love when animes do this uh like um they throw in that whole lobster episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you're like, as a kid, you're like, wait, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Like the pro- thing about the great thing about anime and that always kept me coming back. is like, I was always so confused. Mm-hmm. Like, cause you miss an episode or you, or you don't, uh, or you don't understand like what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they do an episode like that where it's like, they all die in space because they eat a space lobster. That's been in right. a fridge way too long that yeah. spike forgot about. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it, you just sit there and you're like, you're like, you're like okay, I got to keep watching because I don't know what's going on, and, and they never explain it, and they never explain find it. The next episode, yeah, yeah. I, I love this. Uh, I love this anime called Space Dandy, and it's episodic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, uh, I cannot get anybody on board with on, with Space, with Space Dandy, mm-hmm. but I mean, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, because it's episodic, and it's uh, I love animes that are always parody of animes, like. Okay. Space Dandy is a direct parody, I believe, to the Spike character in Cowboy mm-hmm. Bebop, yeah, and much like One Punch Man, right? Like. But again, the art in it is is great, and the stories are great, and mm-hmm. like he's just a babbling idiot who loves boobs, and yeah. you're like, okay, so you get your fan service, like they touch on everything, yeah. and uh, you sit there and you're just like, okay, like I get what you're doing here. Yeah. Well, like I said, my girlfriend and I have recently been watching Jujutsu Kaisen, yeah, which is a, a more serious but also has that goofy side to it, right? Like there is a, a third year student i think or whatever because it's always some kind of student right. hierarchy bullshit i know right um, always like <laughs> yeah. the student council is like god the student council yeah, the like, student, like, yeah. Every time. yeah have you seen uh oh what is it where they're gambling um oh you gotta watch that uh oh what is it called uh it's on netflix mm-hmm. I, i'm not familiar with this at all oh, oh what is it called fuck it'll come to me yeah. uh yeah, but they're the whole student. The whole uh, the whole school is the whole hierarchy of the school is uh, it's a gambling school. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I mean the fan service is crazy on it, but of course. Uh, I, that's but the student council is like the re- you're completely right. You're right. It's God the student council, yeah, the like, government, some local high school student council. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like uh, like one of my favorite video games of all time is Persona Five. Yeah, I love Persona Five. 
a high school student, the final boss, much like many JRPGs, is you were fighting like the god of emotion and people's like subconscious. It's yeah. like no, they're fucking not. <laughs> yeah, right, like, yeah. They're not. That, but but that, the student council thing and so many things being in high school is actually one of my biggest complaints about anime. Right, but that is the thing that gets you watching as a as, as a, a kid. kid. Yeah. And, and and you're like, okay, like uh you have to go through it's Kakaguri, by the way, is the name of that anime. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's the that's the thing that hooks you as a kid. And yes, I know it's a trope and like they uh, they push it with like you know all right you you're sexualizing these like yeah ambiguously mm-hmm. like possibly eighteen year old like they it's, never tell you where they're at it's, it's my biggest gripe yeah. if, if I see that in an anime I'm out dude I that's have the, to turn it off dude that's the uh, <laughs> that's like uh, I saw a video it was a meme where it was like okay how old is this girl and then they put up an anime and they're like they're like sweating and they're like they're like uh, 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 eighteen, four or uh, fourteen, and then it's like a real young girl. It's like how young is, or how old is this girl? And he's like uh, thirteen. She's like three thousand four hundred eighteen years. She's yeah. a dragon or yeah, some. Right. Oh, yeah. It it upsets me so much that I can't watch the show because right. it's just it feels so gross to me that it's very difficult for me to make it past that. Yeah. The cl- like the way to spit in f- the face of a entire culture. Yep, that's yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and say every culture's <laughs> yeah. right. I'm not gonna do it. Like yeah. uh, like One Punch Man. Uh, what's her name? Um, Storm or whatever. With tornado or Storm? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Bo- I'm like, what are you doing? Like, she's the older sister. Like, this is what are you doing? Like, Tornado's you- the older sister. Yeah, yeah. It's like you could have just made her look like an adult. What are we? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are we smaller. doing this? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Yeah, like, there's true. no point to me in doing that. Um, yeah, it's true. Yeah, but but uh, Storm though, Storm looks old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's fine. yeah she, her, and her sister are on the cover of every book. It's oh yeah, they know <laughs> what they're doing. Oh yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. It's like it goes kind of deep because I know the the creator of One Piece met his wife because they were doing a One Piece stage play and she was playing Nami. Oh really? And looked like Nami. So he was like, "All right, I just, I just manifested this. <laughs> we're gonna shit. shoot <laughs> this <laughs> shot." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like i get it like I, I i understand that it's cringy uh it's i've been to japan twice it's oh, i've a, always wanted to go yeah you need to go tokyo is amazing um all of japan is amazing mm-hmm. um but like without stuff like that like i get that part of the genre but like then you get something like fully coolie mm-hmm. um and i don't know if you ever watched fully coolie but like that is a uh that is a perfect like coming of age teenage anime Mm -hmm. and you like i think it's like 13 episodes and you really are like i just remember being young and watching it and being like i don't know what this is like i don't know what the feeling is that i have in it but i know that i have this feeling and you just and you're like like okay but it's a high it's a middle school high school Mm -hmm. like kid going through you know puberty and life and the yeah. parts that you relate to also get kind of funny and nuanced too i guess not nuanced sometimes like in jujitsu kaisen that we were just watching mm-hmm. somebody was fantasizing like what it's like to grow up and he's like actually growing up is getting annoyed with the little shit that bothers you like right. standing in the grocery store line that's what getting old is right <laughs> it's yeah like, it's like nailed it yeah. absolutely nailed it right yeah um yeah, so yeah i've been watching like spy families on 100 um this like jujitsu kaisen mm-hmm. it's funny how anime's changed from what i felt like it was when i was a kid but i also feel like that's through the lens of only i could watch toonami stuff right yeah you've, you've discovered more adult anime yeah which uh which i did i, I like i mean i loved gore anime for a long time you said gore yeah like just okay. anything like blood sea i really mm-hmm. liked i liked van helsing or i like i liked helsing helsing uh horror is such a good medium for anime and oh it is I it's amazing like, especially here because we all know the shonen stuff in america yeah. for the most part like junji ito and like oh well junji ito's the artist oh, the guy. oh yeah okay um, a, not a lot of his stuff has been adapted into an anime because okay. it's, it's cool. pretty yeah pretty rough stuff mm-hmm. it's like body horror stuff yeah um but like anime as an art style for horror and gore can go next level. Right. Yeah. I, like, I agree. I like, uh, I mean, just anything like, I mean, Castlevania is, is great. Yeah, like Castlevania I mean, is amazing. Yeah. But yeah, when you get deep into it, um, or even the popular stuff like attack on Titan, right. Some mm-hmm. of that stuff is just gut wrenching to mm-hmm. watch. You're like, it's tough. Yeah. I'm trying to think of it like some other, like horror animes I've watched. Um, yeah. 
I've been getting into Parasite recently. That's been pretty Parasite good. Parasite was great. It's not, it's like borderline. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. You know? I took, uh, yeah. I don't know if actually, I've, I'm thinking of uh, the, the Korean movie. Oh, yeah. yeah which Parasite, is also very good. Which is also great. Yeah, I think I got halfway through Parasite, to yeah. be honest with you. I don't know if I finished it. I liked it when they were alluding to more body horror early on. Right. And then it became less horror, like what's happening to me, kooky. And I was mm-hmm. like, ah, you, I feel like you, right. you, you misappropriate, like you did it wrong. It like, yeah, you had the right lane. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. then you shifted out of it for more broad appeal. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like, I, I'm tr- I, I was telling you this before the show, I was trying to think of something I've watched in the last three months that wasn't anime because mm-hmm. I got Crunchyroll and I've just been catching up on all kinds of stuff. Dude, it's uh, yeah. I mean, once you first get that Crunchyroll subscription, it's like mm-hmm. mainlining crack. Like, or, like yeah. dude, I mean, like, or just yeah. heroin straight to yeah. it. You're like, all right, this is yeah. The whole reason you crave I, it. Yeah, yeah. The whole reason I got Crunchyroll is so I could watch Demon Slayer sooner. Oh yeah, because I saw Demon Slayer the first season on on net or hulu and then i was like oh the next season's on crunchyroll i'll just sign up for a month done no. the done. yeah the that's my favorite anime out right now demon slayer demon slayer it's amazing um the uh i just finished the last season um like that's right out not the you haven't read it but i haven't read it no okay. the last season that's that's out mm-hmm. um i enjoyed it but what's the what's the one before that the uh the, what arc is that? That's the where oh, they go into the the oh man the entertainment district. The entertainment district. Mm-hmm. That second to last episode is oh my gosh! It's I mean, so... that's one of the best episodes of anime I've ever seen, and I've yeah. heard people talk shit about it. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You're an idiot. Yeah, like the whole reason I got into the show because to me it just kind of looked like another generic like sword fighting anime, right right your typical power levels and stuff like that. But the, the artistry behind oh, the sword unreal. forms and yeah. And then Mugen train came out and you uh, like it, it hit you right in the heartstrings and you're yeah, like, I okay, I'm hooked. What was that? Hashira's name? The tasty guy. Oh, so good. Yeah. I loved every scene that he was in and yeah. that, that gut literal gut punch at the end. Right. Is mm-hmm. just insane. And then, yeah. And dude, the, the cliffhanger of the second to last episode in the entertainment district when he's got the knife in his bath. Yeah. And it blows up, mm-hmm. dude. I, like, like I wanted a cigarette after it. <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, I was like, I was like, we have to watch this again. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, and it like, so we would watch it. I watched it, uh, dubbed. I watched it subbed. Then and I watched dubbed. it dubbed. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, all right, uh, yeah, we have to, we watched it, I think, three times in a row. It's so good. Uh, so I also like like JRPGs and stuff like that. Like yeah. I said, I love Fire em- or uh, Persona. Yeah. I'm also a big fan of Fire Emblem. So like, yeah. ever since I was a kid, I've loved all this stuff. Macy and I have been playing a game recently with the English voice actors yeah. because there's so much crossover. Right. So whenever we hear somebody, we like take bets on other things we've heard them in. Right, yeah. And it's funny to hear how often our favorite people are in a bunch oh, of stuff. Yeah, they're, well, Funimation, I think, is the one who dubs all of that and they use all the voice actors, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah it's like Vegeta is like, uh, is uh, Kuwabara yeah, and yeah. who is, uh, oh, what's the one from Full Metal Alchemist, uh, the big general? Oh, uh, Strong. Strong, yeah, yeah. I think Vegeta's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's the same voice actor. It's so funny because yeah. Fire Emblem has so many characters. So, like, uh, one of our favorite characters or two of our favorite characters are Felix and Dimitri okay. from Fire Emblem. Mm-hmm. And we, we can pick them out now. Like, when we watch anime, we're like, oh, shit, is that? Yeah. Oh, it's Dimitri. Oh, shit. Bro, it's like the you know hype you're, behind it. You know, great. you're in deep when you start recognizing the Japanese uh, voice actors. Oh, like okay. my buddy can like, he was like, he can pick out Japanese voice actors. I haven't got that far. Yeah, yet. I know. That's when you're deep. deep I'm that's, trying. That's when you're a weeb. Yeah. Like, that's when you're, yeah, you're a weeb on steroids. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. When you realize, yeah, when you realize that, uh, that they're all the same people, yeah. you're like, it kind of takes away from it, but you're like, right, I whatever. think I like it even more Do you? because okay. it, I think it shows the range. Cause right. like in fire emblem, I knew Felix is like the stoic swordsman mm-hmm. and like the honor and just the whole thing that he did. Yeah. And then in demon slayer, he's actually the demon that kills tasty that Hashira. Oh yeah. So he's him. And then in jujitsu Kaisen, he's the current bad guy that is all, like, they're all three very different, Right. things but they're pulling it off so well right like uh, the range that it shows is phenomenal i love it is the studio that's doing i know the studio that's doing jujitsu kaisen is also the one that does chainsaw man mm-hmm. don't they do are they doing one more isn't there a, i don't know I'm i think sure. there's three that they're doing and i yep. can't remember i think i've watched all three of them yep. but I, i've been getting into it 
anime deep enough recently that I'm starting to see like little jokes from just Googling like the studio that does stuff Mm -hmm. like a ZOM 100. Yeah. I know you said you haven't seen it yet. The, the whole point of the show is that this guy works for uh, a, a black company is what they call it in Japan. But here it would be like an exploitive company where it's like, you have to work the overtime and no overtime Mm -hmm. day. And then the zombie apocalypse happens. So he creates a bucket list of everything he wants to do now that he's liberated from his job. Yeah. Like that is the point of the Yeah, show. right. Yeah. It's a good zombie apocalypse. Yeah. The company's logo is like ALS or something like uh-huh. that. And it's almost a one for one for the animation studio that animates the Pokemon series. Oh, really? And then come to find out all the people that work on ZOM 100 left the studio that makes the right. Pokemon. So you're like, oh, yeah, you guys are there's sneaky. some shit talking in there. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. It's so funny. I was yeah. like, I was like, this looks like, oh shit, these yeah. are people just memeing on like their old employers. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's good. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I like finding the nuggets in mm-hmm. uh, in anime. Yeah. I, uh, a type of anime that I used to be, I guess I'm still really into is like kaiju stuff. Mm-hmm. Like a big fan of that. So much so that I'm like jealous of the exclusive stuff that Japan gets. Oh yeah. Cause like there was a disaster game that came out where the whole point of the game is you are a person during a kaiju attack in the city. Right. Trying to escape. And their DLC was like Evangelion and like Ultraman and yeah. Gundam and Godzilla. Mm-hmm. So like you're just seeing all these monster fights while you're trying to get out of the city. Right. That's the coolest shit ever. That's amazing. We yeah. We don't get any of that stuff because no. of licensing in America. Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ultraman is actually underrated. Yeah, uh, I think so too. The one that they put out on Netflix was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that uh, one a lot. I actually just realized I think I'm talking about Gundam. I don't know if I've seen Ultraman. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a corny looking, uh, superhero. Yeah. Yeah. I know he looks like Jet Jaguar from Godzilla. Like, yeah. It was kind of like mm-hmm. the meme for a while because I love yeah. Godzilla. Do you? But, oh, yeah. Yeah. I like the, did you I mean, watch this? This is my. Like that's Gigan from Godzilla. Like, yeah, I'm in. I'm I don't in know. I don't know a whole lot about Godzilla, but I did like those animated series that they did on Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was good. That was good. They were good. But cool. Anything else you want to chat about when it comes to anime? I, I think we know. covered everything. I think the, we yeah. The weird, the great, the amazing, the really creepy. Like we've covered the whole spectrum. I know that we're missing uh, like a lot. Yeah. But, uh, that's but I mean, to, uh, come as back a and talk about it again. Yeah, as a casual observer of anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> which else I'll, I'll I'll say I'm casual. Uh, there's people that are way deeper than me. Oh yeah, always. Uh, always. I know, and I know. Like if somebody watches, they're gonna be like, "That dude doesn't know shit." They're about gonna anime. complain. Yeah, that's always how it goes. But uh, but yeah, like no, I think we covered yeah. enough for one podcast. Cool. Yeah. I think that's gonna basically cover it. Uh, where can people find you? Look you up. What shows you got? Uh, yeah, so I've got a show on the 16th, uh, the Spicy Magic Show, if I believe that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tenna and uh, Daryl run that show. Uh, it's going to be fun. And then, um, wait, no, I've got your show the 16th, don't I? The, no, it's Friday. This Friday. This Friday. Okay. Two days They're all that. blending together. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, <laughs> it makes me seem like I'm bragging. Yeah. But you can, <laughs> I've got so many shows, I don't know when they are. Yeah. Okay? Just go outside, you'll see me. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> just walk into any bar where there's four people, you'll see me. <laughs> Yeah, Doing comedy in front of unwilling <laughs> patrons. That's how it feels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you can follow me on uh, Instagram, LOL, Derek James. Uh, same thing on TikTok. There's no TikTok videos, so but you can follow me if you want. Uh, and same thing on Twitter. Cool. Right on. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming out of the show. This has been Nerd News. You can find us everywhere at Nerd News or the Nerd News Network. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, and I can't wait to have you back. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate cool. it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>